Following the draw in Amsterdam on the 3rd of March, we now know how each group in the 2020-21 UEFA Nations League will line up. In this video, I will go through the groups and provide some quick thoughts and insights on all of them. However, I won't make specific predictions with how the groups finish. That will be in a future video, probably in August. I'll start with League D and work my way up to League A. In Group D2 we have Gibraltar, Liechtenstein and San Marino. Three absolute powerhouses of international football. It baffles me that one of these teams will actually be promoted to League C. But uh, yeah, one of them will, that's just a fact. So that's something we're gonna have to deal with. In D1, the Faroe Islands, Latvia, Andorra and Malta. If I would have to decide which team of this group I think is gonna be promoted, which I, I said I wasn't gonna make any predictions, but that uh, idea is just, yeah, that's gone, long gone now, thrown out the window. Uh, I think the Faroe Islands are honestly better than Latvia, because Latvia lost every game, and the Faroe Islands, actually no, Latvia defeated Austria. I mean, I don't know, all of these teams are... They're not very good. I'm sorry to say it, but they just aren't. Yeah, and also I apologize, you're not going to get some deep level of analysis with, uh, I mean, these such terrible national teams. Sorry, <laughs> like they just are, you know. If they become better, I'll be the first person to admit it, but right now, they're pretty terrible. Also, sorry if you hear my share making noises. Alright, C4. Albania, Belarus, Lithuania, Kazakhstan. Albania are, uh, along with Kazakhstan, I think they're the best, the two best teams of the group. With, uh, I mean, Belarus being possibly up there as well. Uh, honestly, I think Kazakhstan right now are, actually no, they're, they're about even with Albania. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not gonna go on anymore with that. I mean, Kazakhstan, they defeated um, Scotland 3-0, which is not saying a lot, because right now I'm pretty sure Scotland would lose to the Vatican City if they played against them. Uh, yeah, and Albania, uh, I mean, nothing spectacular, but they defeated Iceland, so you know, uh, they have some capabilities. Belarus and Lithuania have some work to do. However, Belarus are probably better than Lithuania, so Lithuania have slightly more work to do. Greece, Kosovo, Slovenia, Moldova. Alright, interesting. Uh, I feel like Greece, um, they, you don't think, you feel like Greece should be in at least, like, B or something, but here they are in League C, uh, because they are frankly terrible and honestly deserve to be here. Uh, I mean, they were terrible in European qualifiers, finishing behind Finland and Bosnia, and I think even Armenia, if I'm not mistaken. So they got some work to do, and it's a pretty competitive group actually. Kosovo are not weak at all, I mean, Kosovo are finished third in their qualification group, narrowly behind the Czech Republic, and they're in the playoffs for Euro UEFA Euro 2020, which I, I think they will qualify. I think. So yeah, like I said, competitive group, Slovenia, they're bad, but they're good for being a UEFA Nations League C team. That's what I'm gonna say. Right, Georgia, North Macedonia, Estonia, Armenia. North Macedonia, they changed the name, huh? Alright, hopefully the Greeks will stop being triggered then. Uh, it would have been awkward if Greece and Macedonia were in the same group. Because the Greeks would have just thought that, what? This is a national team competition, how can a province of our nation be here? <clears throat> yeah, Georgia, they're pretty good. Uh, was that a voice crack? I think that might have been a voice crack, I'm not sure. Uh, Georgia are pretty good. Uh, they won their previous Nations League group in League D in the previous season uh, with a re I mean not no not relative ease it was they just soared through that group winning every game except I think one I think they won like five games and drew one game so they are pretty good and Armenia also are also pretty good they defeated Greece but Greece sucks so does it really matter you know and North Macedonia are also pretty good but <laughs> given the context. You know, you have to keep that in mind. <laughs> that we're talking, we're say, looking at this from a League C perspective. Yeah, Estonia, I think they are the worst team of the group. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do I have anything more to say? I don't think so. So let's move on to, uh, yeah, 
this uh, Montenegro, Cyprus, Luxembourg, Azerbaijan. A really intriguing group. It's really hard to say actually. Uh, I mean, you might just look at Montenegro or Azerbaijan and just immediately say that those are the best teams. But honestly, I think Luxembourg have become... I mean, they are they are really, really good for being a microstate. I mean, they... 2018 World Cup qualification, for example, uh, nil nil away against France, and they just narrowly lost one nil to Sweden, and like oh, narrowly four three against Bulgaria. Bulgaria are much worse than Sweden and France, but you know, Luxembourg can compete. They're not a free win like they, they're not. You're not gonna beat them like six nil or eight nil every time, uh, like 30 years ago or something. Even even though Sweden did that in. In 2018, uh, yeah. Well, oh, actually, no, it was 2017. Fuck. Okay. Uh, Azerbaijan are, uh, yeah, they're they're not good. <laughs> I mean, they have had a competitive qualification group for European qualifiers, and I think they only won like one game. But it was only competitive because all of the teams were about equally bad, except Croatia, were slightly better than all of them. Uh, but yeah, Azerbaijan are not too good. Cyprus, I haven't talked about Cyprus. You know, Cyprus, they overperform on club level, but their national team is, I mean, nothing out of the ordinary. All right, we're finally starting to get to some proper teams. Um, yeah, I hope that's not something controversial to say or anything. And we have Wales, Finland, Republic of Ireland, and Bulgaria. So we have two British uh, teams. No, not, yeah, no, okay. No, Wales is a British team. Ireland isn't, okay. I got, please don't, I don't want the IRA to kill me, you know, I don't. Uh, Wales and Ireland, they were in the same group uh, of the last Nations League, so it should be interesting to see if, uh, if their re relationship will change. But I mean, other than that, it's a really competitive group, except Bulgaria, who are much worse than all of them. Bulgaria have disappointed me so much, and it's really a shame, because I thought they would actually qualify for the Euros, but they didn't, they just completely disappointed me and uh, yeah it was uh, a shame and not to mention they yeah they, they're, they're also, their fans are, can also be kind of racist which I, I think is also not you know great um yeah but yeah other than that it's really competitive group uh, wales finland republic of ireland they're all really disciplined def defensive squads uh, you know very disciplined players tactic and uh, managers you know tactics uh, wise is that a real sentence? I think it might not be. Uh, but yeah, that what I, my main point, it's going to be a highly competitive group, but it's going to be really entertaining to watch. However, actually no, it might not be that entertaining because they play defensive football. But it's going to be uh, probably really tight, a really tight race. Russia, Serbia, Turkey and Hungary. Uh, I mean, if I were, were to hang hand pick four nations to create like, the four most controversial nations in Europe, these are probably what I, the ones I would pick. You know, Russia, Sur Turkey, like, fighting proxy wars. <laughs> Serbia, her allies with uh, Russia. Hungary, who are, you know, they're kind of controversial, you know. But, you know, this is football, so let's not bring up any politics or anything. You know, let's keep that out of the discussion. All right, footballing-wise, I think Turkey right now are... I would probably have to slightly, slightly favor Turkey over Russia. Because Turkey have been so impressive in European qualifiers. They defeated France 2-0 at home and drew with them 0-0 away. Uh, so they are serious contenders. They're more than contenders. They're, I would probably consider them favorites in this group, to be honest. Um, Serbia and Hungary... Like one year ago or something, or a few months ago, I would have said Serbia are decisively better than Hungary. But honestly, with the results in European qualifiers, uh, I would say they are about even. But I think Russia are by uh, they're more. Russia is uh, quite comfortably better than both Russia, Serbia and Hungary, uh, but marginally worse than Turkey at this point. All right, Czech Republic, Scotland, Slovakia, and Israel. All right, so the Czech Republic and Slovakia in the same Nations League group again. It's uh, a friendly uh, rivalry, you know, I don't think we're going to see people die. It's just a playful, you know, little relationship they have. And interestingly enough, Scotland and Israel were also in the same group of the last season's Nations League. And, and they play against each other in 
the qualifying playoffs for the Euros. So that's going to be interesting to see. Uh, I think the Czech Republic are, I mean, it's not really controversial to say, the Czech Republic are the best team of this group. Uh, and Slovakia comfortably in second place. And Scotland and Israel are, I mean, the, with the results between the two nations, uh, you know, and performance, recent performances, they're about even. Uh, which is a shame. Scotland should be doing better, but they just, they're terrible. They're not like, they're not a B team, they're a C team, you know, even though they're in League B. But I think they're gonna, yeah. <clears throat> Moving on. Austria, Norway, Northern Ireland, Romania. This is oh, such a competitive group. I get excited just looking at it. Austria with uh, who plays really entertaining football, uh, score a decent amount of goals. Uh, but I think their football will be like Norway and Northern Ireland. They will make Austria look boring because uh, of how good they are defensively. Uh, if that makes any sense, which I think it does, because of course it does. And Norway, I'm also really excited to see Norway, uh, because I mean, quite obviously, they have a lot of superstars coming up, you know, well, that have already risen, basically. You know, Holland, Odegaard, Sandebadia, Joshua King, Sörlot, etc. Uh, they're really good, and honestly, more importantly, than, even more importantly than that, they have a superb manager who gets the best out of the players, Lars Lagerbeck, um, who has a lot of, you know, plenty of international tournament experience, which uh, is of course useful for the, for the Norwegians. So I, I think Norway are, they're my personal, I know it's controversial, um, but I think Norway will win this group. I said I wasn't going to make predictions, but I, I lied. All right, moving on to the only league that matters. And uh, when I say the only league that matters, I of course mean League A. Uh, Switzerland, Spain, Ukraine, Germany. Uh, Switzerland, seeded as the top team of this group, might be misleading because I actually think they are the worst team of this group. Yes, even worse than Ukraine. Uh, because Ukraine have become really good under Shevchenko. And they also have some really uh, good players, excellent players that have emerged. Like Jarmolenko, Sichenko, uh, just to name a couple. Uh, but I mean, the, re the results in European qualifiers speak for themselves. 5-0 uh, against Serbia, 2-1 two, two against Portugal, but really should have been 2-0 because they conceded an absolutely pointless penalty. And 0-0 away against Portugal. So Ukraine, they are really good. And I, I don't think it's going to be a matter of Switzerland and Ukraine competing for who's not going to be relegated. I think Ukraine are going to be competing with like Spain and Germany uh, with places for the Nations League finals. Was that a prediction? I don't. I don't think it was. <clears throat> of course. Ah, uh, yes. The group of death: Portugal, France, Sweden, Croatia. Yes, the group of death that uh, my country, Sweden, so often finds itself in. Also, did you hear that Discord notification? Maybe you did, but do I care? No, I don't. Yeah. If I don't, this is okay. So let let's go through this. Reigning European champions and Nations League champions, Portugal. Reigning world champions France, and uh, and Euro finalists France as well, and reigning Euro no uh, World Cup finalists Croatia and uh, Sweden. Uh, yeah, interesting group, you know. Uh, I I'm, I don't want to be biased here, but judging by you know Croatia's fall have been dramatic since the World Cup. Uh, well, not okay. It's been, uh, I mean, they've, they've certainly fallen to a some decently big extent, even though they're not terrible. Uh, but I think they've fallen to the point where they are slightly, slightly worse than Sweden. So I think, uh, you know, you can make your own conclusions based on what, what I just said. Uh, Portugal versus France. I think France uh, should be considered slightly favored over Portugal in this case. Even though Portugal are, you know, reigning European champions and Nations League champions, uh, simply because uh, of uh, the motivation factor, as well as recent performances, you know, it's a, uh, it's more than just one thing. It's uh, multiple things building up. Uh, Portugal were not poor in European qualifiers, but you know, not great either. Only seventeen points, uh, finishing behind Ukraine. Granted, it's a good Ukraine, but they're expected to do better against them. Uh, 
and I think France are just uh, slightly better than Portugal. England, Belgium, Denmark, and Iceland. Yeah, Iceland, they should not be here. I mean, they were relegated, but then uh, UEFA decided to change the format, so uh, here they are in uh, League A yet again. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're England, Belgium, and even Denmark would probably be considered Iceland six free points here. Uh, but I do, I don't think they lose every game. I think they might just, I don't know, win against the eventual winner. Like if, let, let's say Belgium are already guaranteed to qualify for the Nations League finals into their last game or something, and they play against Iceland, then Iceland might just win or just draw that game because they don't care. Yeah, I don't have any expectations on Iceland, unfortunately, which is a shame because they were so good in like, uh, 2015 and to through 18 or like half midway through 2018 like after the world cup i think it's fair to say even though they didn't advance belgium should be considered slightly more favored than england here uh, because they are just slightly better i think there's no denying that uh, i think england are uh, they're good but uh, they're not quite there yet even though they did reach the uh, finished third in the last uh, nation league season the Netherlands, Italy, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and Poland. Uh, yeah, once again, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, well, not once again, but uh, they were. I was about to draw a parallel between them and Iceland at how they were both relegated but spared because of the format change. But then I realized no, Bosnia they were actually in league promoted from League B last season. Uh, yeah, but a lot has changed since then. Uh, I I also ha I had really high expectations on Bosnia heading into European qualifiers. But they uh, were terrible, and now they can. I mean, they might not qualify for the Euros. Uh, they're in the playoffs. I I have predicted them to qualify through the playoffs, uh, but I mean, it's far from a certainty that they will do it. Uh, you know, I I mean, they really. I feel like they're out of their league here. Uh, even though they definitely deserve to be promoted from League B. I mean, they were absolutely amazing in the last uh, season's Nations League. Uh, winning the group easily uh, but uh, yeah I mean I think they're worse they're definitely the worst team of this group and they will be relegated that's that's not a prediction by the way you might think it is but it's it's not so yeah po Bosnia to be relegated Poland to be I mean enjoying a third place finish and then Netherlands and Italy you know fighting for first place I think Italy uh, I slightly slightly a favorite Italy. I think the Netherlands and Italy are about they're about even uh, with uh, skill, but I think the main decider will be that Italy uh, are more hungry because the Netherlands uh, already uh, they did qualify for the Nations League finals last season. So Italy will be even more motivated, and I think that will be the minor difference that separates the two nations.